Hi guys and welcome to this very sunny Friday here in the UK. Um, another video here with uh, many things to cover. Um, so let's get started straight off with, as ever, thank you so much to all the Susie fans for leaving comments uh, on my posts about the Susie gigs and stuff. And thank you for all your, um, your song recommendations and song wants for the set. Um, obviously it's a top secret what we, we are doing at um, Shea Susie. It's, uh, and that's the way it should be because obviously you guys want to be excited when we play things like Voices, like we did uh, Time Mouth last week. Um, and we've been getting a lot of love about that. And I think Twitter was alive with it on that Friday night. So, you know, by all means, keep sending them. Um, that's all good, but obviously I can't give anything away. Um, but most of you actually, you're just not asking for that. You're just saying, please, could you play these songs? So, you know, again, it shows the love you've got for the music and the catalogue. So please keep that coming. The, the interaction's great. I love it. And I, I try to get back to as many of you as, as I can. And I think I'm up to date with getting back to you, I think, replying. So if I haven't got back to you yet, I will do. And um, that's something I forgot to mention was the, the B side of, I think it was Hong Kong Garden, was uh, Voices and we played it last Friday in Time Mouth and um, obviously we knew it was coming, obviously, we'd rehearsed it, um, but I think most people who'd been watching the YouTube clips of us playing for the last couple of months would have been thinking, oh, they're going to start with Night Shift, obviously, that's what that's what they're doing. And of course the, the intro music kicked in and then we came on stage and we cracked into Voices. And e even though I'm sort of... Um, my plumbing doing weird things up there. Um, even though uh, I was in ears, you know, obviously, uh, I played the intro, you know, that sort of 16 bars and then it sort of slows down and then play that flam and then the guitar takes over. But there was almost like a gasp. You could feel a gasp in the in, in, in the Priory, in the castle site, on the site of the fans going, oh my God, they're actually playing voices. And it was, it was amazing. It was a real like, um, you know, the hairs on the back of your neck standing up. It was awesome. So let's see. There might be some more surprises to come, but I'm, as I say, I'm not going to give anything away, but thanks for uh, sending in those requests and keep them coming. Um, another thing I'd like to mention, I keep mentioning this book, Effortless, well, not keep, but I've mentioned it a few times, Effortless, Effortless Mastery by Kenny Werner. And this is what it looks like. So you can get online uh, on Amazon or wherever you go or go to Waterstones and buy it. Uh, it comes with the CD, or it used to, it probably doesn't now, it's probably a download um, of meditations and so on and so forth, which uh, are really cool. They can chill you out, but it's just really good. When I was going through my my ang <clears throat> performance anxiety and stuff, this book um, was always in my travel bag with me. And, and we're talking back in the 90s, mid 90s. Um, and just recently, if you check some of these posts, you'll see that when we started the Susie gigs again, for the first run of three gigs in Europe, I was a little bit kind of shell-shocked. My first big gig since um, COVID. So this book, once again, I mean, it's, you can see it's been well-worn and, and stuff. But once again, it went into my travel bag and came with me and uh, it was a real help. So this is the book that I keep um, going on about. So if you suffer with any of those things, and you don't have to be a musician either to, to get something from this, just if you suffer with anxiety and things like that, this book is superb and will put you right. So I definitely wanted to give this some airtime and I just have, so there we go. Brilliant, so that's that. So Effortless Mastery by Kenny Werner. And I'm sure it's um, on Audible and all those other Kindles and all those other things, you know, you, you know modern things. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm quite excited about this as well, is um, Chris Bennett, a good friend of mine, makes the Bopworks drumsticks. Now, if you don't know what Bopworks drumsticks are, get online and check them out. Put in Bop Works, as in Bop, Bebop, Works, W-O-R-K-S. And I may even have put the, the website up right now, possibly. Um, if you're a jazz drummer, and even if you're not, I mean, they do um, an Art Blakey stick that feels very much like a 5A with a really nice sort of acorn like you get on the Vic Firth sort of um, tips, you know, on a 5A, and they just feel great. Uh, and they're basically, the sticks are designed on the classic drumsticks that the jazz drummers used in the sort of 40s, 50s, 60s and into the 70s. As I say, the Art Blakey is the most sort of modern feeling stick of a 5A, but they do like a Birdland range 
Um, they do uh, 40 swing classics, which are my favorites. I mean, I'm mentioning those three because they're the ones, they're my go-to size for sticks. Um, and uh, But they do others. They do like a Mel Lewis and, and, and other things. But for me, the Art Blakey, the Birdland, and the Birdland's a, lot, a much finer stick. So I use that for my sort of trio and quartet jazz gigs, you know, where sometimes a 7 is just a little bit too much. So I find the... Um, the the birdland of a lovely size and the 40s swing classic uh, as well is another one that i really dig it just feels great and sometimes i record with those sticks because you know when the microphones are on the cymbals and maybe you're recording something that isn't sort of full-on but it, it's more kind of textural and so on sometimes i'll have a, a different stick in my left hand for the for the kit but in my right when i'm using the hat and the the, the ride and stuff i might have uh, a different style and it probably would be if it was a more jazzy ethereal type thing it probably would be uh either the birdland or the 40 swing classic that i would have in my right hand just to change up even if it's 5a on a rim click this side or something i mean it feels weird in your hands but when you hear how it sounds through the microphones it feels great so if you're a heavy drummer these sticks you know aren't going to work for you if you go for the lighter range but if you're a jazz drummer playing a lot of acoustic music and you're not mic'd up a lot you know and you're playing a lot of pizza express type gigs um you know and weddings and stuff in the background where it's not full on then you should really check them out because seven a's by all the companies are great but they don't quite do what these sticks do but anyway and chris is a good mate of mine really f a lot of noises in the flat today it's like what's going on sorry about that you hear all these bangs and knocks um, but he sent me uh, this new thing, which is called a, a stick station. Now, this isn't it, obviously, because it doesn't do very much. But this is just the packaging, and this is the instructions <laughs> of what happens with um, the stick station. But basically, we were having a conversation ages ago, and he said to me, do you think this will be a good idea? And uh, he explained it to me, and I was thinking, I've been there so many times where I've had to put a towel on the floor, Tom, or something, or rest the brushes just you know, halfway on and halfway off the rim of the floor tom and then very quietly try and move sticks to brushes and brushes to sticks for whatever part of the song I'm playing. Like if I start the head on um, the head of the tune on brushes, but by the time I get to the solo, I want to get to a stick to pick up the first solo. You, you practice it and you learn how to do it. But there's not many things out there to really help with this. Well, now there are because we've got this stick station. Now, I'm obviously going to do a proper video on this at some point when I go to the, the studio out at Nam, and I will do a proper video of, of how to use this thing but basically you get these clips which go on your floor tom so you know the furthest part of the floor tom away from you you know maybe if you've got another crash symbol this side or another ride symbol this side if you've got two rides or something and then you can place your sticks and your brushes in this this indentation here as you can see there and it's and it's made out of some very, very lovely material, which obviously is gonna hold the sticks very well. It's not shiny, it's kind of rubbery kind of thing. But anyway, it's brilliant. So a stick station, what a great idea. You know, I mean, the classical guys obviously have got their, their traps table and bits for all their sticks and stuff, you know, and that's fine, but sort of contemporary rock, jazz, drummers or whatever, we, we haven't got anything like that. You know, we don't take that as part of our rig, basically. Um, so this is just another way of doing it. And I think it's absolutely fab. So I'm going to take it to the studio. I'm going to give it a go. It's been living on my leady floor tom over there. I must be the only person, certainly in my street, <laughs> that, that in their kitchen has uh, a 1968 Ludwig Super Classic and uh, a 1966 leady Shelley Mann style kit in the kitchen set up. <laughs> I might put a picture in this actually at some point. You're probably seeing it right now of that. But anyway, so this was living on there and I've just pulled it off to, to come over and talk about it. So... Yeah, stick station, what a cool thing, groovy. So there's that. So we're piling through the different things today. So there's that, what else did I wanna mention? Oh yes, um, it was my birthday a little while ago and I keep saying what a lovely crew the Susie team are. They're all wonderful, you know, every, it, it is a family. Once you're in the bubble, it's a beautiful thing. For my birthday, I just wanna talk very briefly the band members when we were in the hotel in Belfort. Um, I guess they didn't have, uh, no expense spared. They they signed uh, a lovely egg cup for me. It means the world. Chaps, thank you. Very nice. I shall place many a boiled egg in there. Um, hard boiled egg. So but that was that. But the, the sweet thing about that was they sent me a text because my girlfriend Emma had come along and um, I suddenly got this text 
in the morning saying, we're outside your door, very tentative text. I was like, I'm coming, yep, okay. And they, when I opened the door, they sang a beautiful, almost like the King Singers rendition of Happy Birthday and gave me some lovely, lovely breakfast pastries and this, Ace. And what else? That was beautiful. So, and I, as I say, I talk about how lovely the crew are, but I also got presents from Gabriel, who's our monitor engineer, all around fab guy. And he bought me this, we were talking about something and I, I didn't really clock it at the time. He said, right, I've just got your present. And I couldn't rem remember or think, I was thinking, what did I just say? What? Anyway, we were talking about this, which Jerome has put on their Facebook and Instagrams occasionally, you know. <laughs> and, and, and I guess we were at the airport and I guess it had come up on someone's feed and I said, damn straight we do. And it's only a joke, of course, because, you know, but there is some truth in it. No. <laughs> anyway, and he got this T-shirt this done for me. So Gabriel, love you, man. That is fantastic. Mwah, thank you so much. Um, and I try not to wear it too often around rehearsals and sound checks for the band. But... And um, another guy who's, uh, well, they're all lovely. What am I saying? They're all fantastic. But another present I got was from Daniel, who I've talked about before. Daniel um, Hawks bought me this book, A Universe from Nothing by Lawrence M. Krauss. We were having another discussion. He's he's a very he's an intellectual. I'm not, and in, in um, airport queues and stuff, uh, and you're waiting to go through and get your bags checked in or immigration or something. And you're in, in these lines. You're like cattle, aren't you? Being shoved down these different. And anyway, so I always end up having really deep conversations with him, and I feel a bit stupid because he knows quite a lot. So um, he said, "I'm going to buy you a book, Rob, and you know you're going to learn stuff." I think he said stuff. I think he both said something else. Um, but yeah, this is fascinating because we were having a discussion. Um, I was having a discussion about how I think technology has moved on since Roswell very quickly and, um, you know, why that's happened. And he said, no, nonsense, nonsense. This all can be explained in here. So I'm, I'm ready for it because I've studied a lot about that and big fan of uh, Dr. Stephen Greer and what he's saying. Um, but I'm obviously open, you know, one must remain open to all different ideas and options. So there's this book. So he's going to, he said, no, no, it's all explained in here. Forget the alien thing. It's all in here. So thank you, Daniel. You, you're brilliant. You and Gabriel, but all the crew, even though, you know, if any of the crew are watching this and haven't bought me anything, but I'm not trying to make a thing of it. It's all good, but I'll give you my address. So if you want to send me something, you can. I was in the studio working with Little Men the other day. That went really well. The real world sessions are going to sound fab when they're up and um, mastered and mixed, mixed and mastered. Let's get it that way around. Uh, and hopefully out on vinyl, I'll let you guys know because it's a nice project and it's one of the first things that I've produced. And I know I talked about mentoring and teaching online lessons and face-to-face -face lessons and that kind of thing. But also, you know, I'm getting into producing at the moment. So if there's anything you guys out there working on some music, want to send it my way, give it, I can give it a listen and so please do so, all good. So I'm going to wrap this video up now because uh, as I say, very eclectic today. Uh, and I may even shove a video at the end of this of another one of my snare drum videos. I've, took that 1964 Slingerland student snare out last Sunday and I recorded loads of videos with it which I've been putting on my YouTube shorts through this week and on my Instagram and Facebook and the drum just sounds great and I've got two more of them you can't see them but I've shot here I've got three of those bad boys but that 1964 one that I got from Tristan at Dramatic there's something about that drum the more, more I see it on that those videos and it's just a my phone you know the camera microphone there's nothing crazy on that it just sounds beautiful and just got such a great sort of vintage kind of sound that makes you want to play those rudimental ideas that i played on them and sort of i was just jamming and messing about really you know i know the timing isn't always solid through it but that's what it's about i'm jamming and having fun and just playing the drum that's what these videos are about otherwise i'd have my click going in my ear and it'd be more formal but with those sort of videos it's like ah just play but thanks for the feedback on that and so many people saying that they've got a slingerland drum um bob wrote to me uh, sorry i can't remember your surname right off the top of my head uh, but he sent me this really long messenger um uh, message which was just full of what he's got and he sent me a picture of his snare drum rack and everything and his um 60s i think his marine pearl student uh slingerland student snare and stuff and i love all this interaction so you know keep all that going it's brilliant so have a great weekend guys um it's a bit rainy today but i hope it cheers up wherever you are 
Once again, thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't yet, please do. Please keep sharing. Susie fans keep writing. We're coming to Latitude next week and then up to Glasgow and looking forward to that. So you guys better be ready because we're ready. Um, have a great weekend, guys. As I say, I'm just going around the houses again here. Have a good one. Take care. Keep drumming. Stay safe. And I shall see you next week.